The agent that the CIA had working for them inside OKB Zero has gone missing. We've been given the job of finding and extracting him. The target learned of XOF's plans to use vocal cord parasites and had hidden himself with the CIA's Mujahideen allies. But following Skullface's death, the Soviets retook OKB Zero and all contact with the target was lost. He may have tried to go back to OKB Zero, but even Langley isn't sure what's going on. After all, they've never even learned of Skullface's plan. That's probably what they want to get out of the man once he's extracted. But we can't allow Langley to learn of the existence of the vocal cord parasites. That's why I want you to bring the target out, boss. Once we have him, we can report him dead and keep him on base. All contact with Langley is being conducted through a cutout. Our reputation should remain intact. As for the reward, it's already in the hands of the cutout. All you have to do is get the job done. Just like always. Mission accepted. Heading to Afghanistan. and extract the missing CIA agent. The target was laying low with a friendly Mujahideen during the vocal cord parasites incident. The man headed back to OKB Zero after the Soviets recaptured it. Check the target's VI on your iDroid. Detected. And now the map has been updated.
Extraction arrived at the motor base. Presence detected. The map has been updated. Select a landing zone. in pursuit. Mission complete. 
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. in on what's been going on. He betrayed the Soviets, passing information to Langley, but got scared after learning XOF used the vocal cord parasites. Then came feelings of guilt that his leaks sent comrades to their deaths, and fear that America might deploy such a weapon itself. But in reality, XOF and Langley don't have a collaborative relationship, and Skullface was not working for America. Still, I can't blame the man for being afraid. After laying low with the Mujahideen, he tried to cut his ties with the U.S. and return to the Soviet military. But along the way, someone came after him, and he was forced back into hiding. Could have been remnants of XOF looking to silence him. And you know the rest. He doesn't seem to know much about the parasites, but nevertheless, it'd be too dangerous to hand him over to Langley or the Soviets. We'll keep him here as originally planned. something. Thank you for putting an end to the infection. that the man on fire was crushed under Sahelanthropus in its hangar. Yeah. He was caught under the wheels of its transport platform. Yeah. But his body wasn't found. What? We searched the area the moment we arrived, but there was no trace of him. I wasn't hallucinating. I know. I trust you on that. That means someone must have taken the body. But when I got there, everything was still as it was. Even Skullface hadn't been touched. I can't see a reason to sneak into a place like that and drag out the biggest, heaviest guy there. What are you getting at? The only option left is... He got up and walked away. 
That platform ran him over. Just ran him over. You're saying that's not enough? I don't want to believe it, but maybe not. He shrugs off bullets, even rocket strikes. There's no reason to think that would finish him. It seems ridiculous, but I'll start gathering eyewitness accounts just in case. If you dig up anything concrete, I want to know. You'll be the first, if I dig anything up. But I hope to hell I don't. No kidding. This is yellow cake that Cypher was having the PF's transport. Before we met you, the boss recovered it from a truck crossing the savannah. Are there metallic archaea inside it? Yes, the archaea metabolize uranium-235 to subsist. They must be stored inside yellow cake, or they cannot survive. So those biological traces we took for impurities were actually the real cargo? Of course they are deactivated so they do not trigger a sudden enrichment. They are like baker's yeast. Yet, they do gradually enrich the uranium as they feed. I imagine you detected weapons-grade traces. Yeah, we did. And the malachite that was loaded on the truck had traces of uranium in it, too. <laughs> so that's the flower, huh? Skullface was gonna sell do-it-yourself new kits. The uranium enriching Archaea complete with the user's manual. And the ores with the uranium could be sourced by the client ore provided by Cypher. Even the trace amounts buried in common ores can be enriched to weapons grade uranium by the metallic Archaea. Proving that must have been the most important factor of the trials. That and the ability to successfully prevent detonation. So if the amounts of uranium in the ores are low enough, they can get past any inspection. And you only need a tiny amount of the Archaea to act as the yeast. No great challenge to smuggle that either. The first step towards saturating the world with nukes. His plan. That was not my intention. Hmm. <laughs> my only goal in developing the metallic Archaea was to save the Diné. What made you think a tool for creating undetectable nuclear weapons would save your people? After 70 years, the Diné reclaimed the Navajo Nation from which we were banished. We bore all the hardships of poverty. But we were proud to live off the land we called our own. But in the moment the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, everything changed. I don't get it. The nuclear arms race between the US and the Soviet Union began with the end of the Second World War. Suddenly, there was a massive demand for uranium. And it was our ill fortune that the ground beneath the Navajo Nation was rich with uranium ore. The Black Anna government set up mine after mine, and many of the Diné worked them. Never informed of any danger. Every day, they went to work with no protection. The slag was simply piled out in the open. When rain fell, uranium traces left behind would seep out, and when the ground dried, it was blown about as dust. Land and water were contaminated, irradiated. Many of us became sick and died. That pain lives on to this day. I had no idea. Wanting more than anything to revive the land my forebears left to me, I was delighted upon discovering microbes that eat uranium. If they could be domesticated, I believed we could rid our land of uranium. Were you successful? No. The research called for funding on a colossal scale. But nobody was willing to invest with no prospect of a return. And that's when Skullface showed up. Correct. I can save you and your people. We share the same will. 
That is what he said to me. And I believed him. Black Anna forced me to abandon my uranium cleanup work and focus on nuclear weapons. And he held all the Diné hostage. Today, the uranium mines within the reservation are finally closing down. It is simply less expensive now to source uranium overseas. New victims, different places. But uranium is a tactical resource. To rely on a foreign country for it is... a difficult decision to make. And he was in the perfect place to influence that decision. He could have condemned your people to the mines forever. The contamination comes not only from uranium. The fallout from the Nevada nuclear tests also settled on our lands. As if our fortune were not already bad enough, we are also downwinders. To save the Diné, I must complete my original research. The one that covers the parasite that lives on the surface of the skull's bodies is what gives them their power, similar to my children who live in my skin. I modified the parasites I isolated from the body of that old man, differentiating them with various abilities, one that can blend perfectly into its surroundings by exposing the pigments in its cells at will. Another that, by harboring multiple species of metallic archaea, can oxidize and reduce metal. Isolating the one that covers and transplanting it into an artificial medium should provide the same abilities as the skulls. But they can only subsist within a human body. Once transplanted into the medium, they will eventually die. Another thing, the weakness of the one that covers is desiccation. Their surface moisture loss is greater than ours. The reason they give off mist is to alleviate this by releasing the salts inside them as microparticles. Water vapor condenses around them, appearing as mist. But this dries out the atmosphere until they cannot even produce mist. And once their supply of water from the host runs out, the parasites are in danger. They, along with their host, enter a form of suspended animation. However, a similar effect occurs if they come into contact with a large amount of water. Rain, for instance, the one that covers will temporarily abandon other processes in his eagerness to absorb the water. Make the weather your ally. Hewitt's dug up some interesting facts about our skull-faced friend. Nine years ago, he was exiled to South Africa, stripped of political power. The upshot's that he ceased being a serious threat, in Cypher's eyes anyway. They eased up on surveillance, giving him an opening to establish his own military unit, one that answered to his will alone. Those men likely had no idea their orders were coming from Skullface. They probably didn't even know the organization was a part of Cypher at all. Anyway, it was in South Africa where he found renewed interest in parasites. And when he discovered the vocal cord parasites, he began to make his plan. Wipe the English language out of existence. Free the world, not by taking men's lives, but by taking their tongues. In his eyes, the greatest symbiotic parasite the world's ever known isn't microbial. It's linguistic. Words are what keeps civilization, our world, alive. There was something Skullface said. America is made up of many peoples, but those peoples never mix. Quite so. One nation 
home to hundreds of different ethnic groups, many of whom stick to their respective living areas, little colonies, not interacting with other groups, going out of their way to avoid one another, their land, organizations, relationships. Thus, the United States of America is no melting pot. It is more of a salad bowl. It is not made up from one people, but for its minorities to function in society, a common ground is needed. Language. Even if the country is not one, no, because it's not one, a lingua franca is necessary. English. American hegemonism was born from the illusion that English could unite diverse ethnicities. In taking in people from around the globe, America became a microcosm of it. Now the boundaries between it and the rest of the world have become blurred. However different our neighbors may be, English enables us to create symbiotic relationships with each other. If English can bring unacquainted neighbors together in America, this should hold true for the world. This salad bowl that is the world can also become one. I have spoken enough. Your men can take it from here. Will you permit me to rest? Have something to eat? I thought you don't eat. I can subsist without food. But there is more to the act of eating than nourishment. We receive nature's blessings, and we affirm our part in it. And in doing so, we express our gratitude. <laughs> Sorry, it's, um... Hearing you say you don't need to eat and that you're a part of nature in the same breath. Anyway, uh, what can we get you? Not exactly a five-star restaurant, but the kitchen's used to serving a lot of different appetites. Hamburgers. Uh, hamburgers? Even we, Dine, have become Americanized. I eat them often back home. <laughs> and you just can't let them go. Well... As far as symbols of the American Empire go, hamburgers are pretty good. The victory of capitalism. Hmm. Your people suffered so much at the hands of America. And you asked for hamburgers. We have suffered more than you can know. But I do not see hamburgers as an accomplice. A single dish providing a balanced helping of nature's blessings. Meat, grain, and vegetable. How could anyone hate such a magnificent thing? Says the guy who can survive on photosynthesis. Balance has nothing to do with it. You just like a good burger. That is also true. Be warned, though. I have very high standards. <sighs> Don't worry. I do, too. All right, then. One good old-fashioned all-American icon coming up. <laughs> I look forward to it. Mission accepted. Heading to Afghanistan. Boss, you need to disable the 
Soviets' reinforcement system by putting a hole in their base-to-base -base comms network. Be careful down there, boss! Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. You made it. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. The map has been updated. That antenna is one of the targets. The map has been updated. That's another one of the targets. Complete. Do you see any more? Analysis complete. you have to identify the targets. We come to site with your binoculars. Once you know where the targets are, take them out to put their network out of action. How you do that is up to you. That looks like the target. We know where all the antennas are now. Take out all three of them. How you do it is your call. Analysis complete. Analysis complete. Что? 
Analysis complete. Ты в порядке? complete.
нет связи. Штаб, штаб, это КП. Подразделил с огонь. Открыли огонь в ответ. Но потеряли врага. Враг будет все еще прятаться поблизости. Соблюдайте осторожность. Прием. Emmerich's finished development on that battle gear of his. Get back to Mother Base.
Shadow Gear is an armored weapon developed to take on hostile bipedal weapon systems. But unlike the Soviet-funded Walker Gear, the Battle Gear still hasn't been properly field tested. I'd like to assign a combat unit to take it on dispatch missions, so that we can evaluate its capabilities and reliability. Assuming you've got no objections, give the order to dispatch the unit from your iDroid. suspicions about Emmerich. Head to the central base camp in Afghanistan and recover that AI pod. It's time we purge Diamond Dogs of that traitorous parasite once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> 